is interesting since China is the first country probably visited after officially inaugurated as Indonesian president and take office. So it's become their second meeting this year alone, showing Jakarta's commitment in strengthening partnership between Jakarta and Beijing. And important in the context of geopolitics and geoeconomic that has been happening recently. We heard Prabowo said that under the current complicated global situation, Indonesia hopes to further strengthen all around strategic coordination with China and become a closer comprehensive strategic partner with China. That's what he says. And now, if we're looking uh, into the dynamic of the global South, China as the largest economic power in the global South has successfully uh, become an example of how developing countries can challenge Western hegemony through its economic power. While in the other hand, Indonesia as the largest country in Southeast Asia has a key role in maintaining regional stability and has the potential to become one of the leader among other developing countries. Now, in terms of trade and investment sector, in 2023, the total value of Indonesia's trade with China reached 139 billion US dollar, while Chinese investment in Indonesia totaled 7.4 billion US dollars, making China the second, second largest foreign investor after Singapore. And today, the two countries signing MOU, the deal on maritime, mining, and water conservation, and it is worth 10 billion US dollar. And the last one, Prabowo also reiterated that he will ensure the policy continuation of the former President Joko Widodo while still maintaining its independence according to Indonesia's non-alignment and active foreign policy. He said this last April after meeting President Xi in Beijing. So it's going to be interesting what to see in the future. Well, Iqbal, China and Indonesia have been promoting synergy between the Belt and Road Initiative and Indonesia's Global Maritime Fulcrum Vision. So a series of cooperative projects have been launched within the frameworks of the BRI and GMF. So how have these projects performed in, in Indonesia? And one of them is J Jakarta and Bandung Speed Railway, which President Xi called it as the BRI uh, Golden Project. And it has become an important symbol of BRI cooperation. Meanwhile, one of the critical projects between two countries, private sectors, is a joint venture between Xingshan Holding Group Company Limited, you know, it's China based biggest private investor in nickel processing, and also Merdeka Copper and Gold. And the other one is the Morowali Industrial Park in Central Sulawesi. In this is Xingshan's most prominent project and also the largest nickel processing park in Asia. And it means that there are indeed strong incentives to further connect Indonesia's GMF policy with China's BRI and Indonesia's GMF also, while bringing uh, tangible benefits to Indonesia's infrastructure development. That's what the both countries always emphasized. Indonesia is also tries to ensure that this project will not bring economic offer dependence potential by applying one, transparency in project management, the second, in-depth cost benefit analysis, and also good governance. Iqbal, Indonesia has prioritized green growth and adopted a green industrial policy. So there has been increasing cooperation between the two countries in green development. So how do the Indonesian media and the public view this cooperation? Well, this is a one thing that both countries always emphasize every time they have a bilateral meeting or meeting with other countries as well. Uh, talk about the energy cooperation between China and Indonesia. It has a long history and also has achieved significant results, actually. Uh, we heard a statement issued on Saturday by Executive Director Institute for Essential Services Reform, or IESR, Febi Tumiwa. She said that the visit must be used to strengthen collaboration with China to support the low carbon energy transition, green investment, technology transfer, and also the development of the clean energy technology industry in Indonesia. That's one of the key points that always both countries always try to emphasize. And given its technological mastery and renewable energy capacity, China is deemed capable of becoming Indonesia's strategic cooperation partner in three sectors. Uh, we call it renewable energy infrastructure, and then there's energy storage investments, clean energy technology manufacturing and supply chains. And also uh, one of the most important thing is industrial decarbonization. One example we call the PT Shenhua Kocha Pembangkitan Jawa Bali is a joint venture between China Shenhua Energy and Indonesia's power company PLN, which has been reducing carbon emissions and improving energy utilization efficiency. And it is, of course, played a significant role in advancing the energy transition and supporting Indonesia's net zero emission goals. So this is what we see in the future 
uh, to cooperate between Indonesia and China in the implementation of the Just Energy Transition Partnership or JETP, Una. 